all of our goal participants from around the world. I'm Fiona Lang Sharp, IBCLC Public Relations Manager and MC for Gold Learning. Well, I'm chatting today with Dr. Anjali Palmquist, and we are going to be talking about her upcoming presentation at Gold Learning, which is titled Understanding and Addressing Breastfeeding Disparities and Human Milk Inequity in Emergencies. Well, welcome, Anjali. It's great to have you here today. Thank you so much. I'm very, very honored to be a part of this conference. Well, I am so excited because I got to listen to you face to face, and that's when I knew right away that we really wanted to have you here at Gold. And so um, our, our short journey of knowing each other um, has brought you here, and I'm so excited because this is, of course, a very passionate topic uh, for me as well. And so, but with that, why don't you introduce yourself, tell our listening audience right now a little bit about yourself and why this topic is important to you. Sure. So I am a medical anthropologist by training. And um, just a few years ago, I decided that I wanted to pursue breastfeeding and lactation research more intensively. So I um, became an IBCLC for the purpose of enriching my research on um, the role of breastfeeding and lactation in health disparities. So my Research, my primary research interest as an anthropologist is really to understand the social and cultural contexts of um, infant feeding that are related to global maternal and child health disparities. And this is a really perfect topic that sort of um, integrates all of many different as aspects of the things that I'm really interested in, understanding what's happening with a, a mother and baby in terms of lactation and breastfeeding, but then also how various um, circumstances and environmental and ecological factors can influence um, differential rates of breastfeeding and breastfeeding outcomes um, across different populations in the world. So it's really important to me because I feel that breastfeeding um, in, it, I, I feel it's important to think about breastfeeding as a basic human right, and kind of this t this talk enables me to describe some of the important concepts around approaching um, understanding global breastfeeding as a, a health and human rights issue, and also why response to emergencies has a really pivotal role in the health of um, maternal maternal and child health populations across the world. That's wonderful, Anjali. I love hearing the background to where you started um, and to where you've come to now. Um, I, I too, I mean, I, I too love the idea of just studying women in their culture, um, their behavior. You know, it's fascinating, and you do this on a global perspective, which is uh, which is great. So I love hearing that. And now moving on to your topic too, um, with what's happening in the world right now. Of course, uh, we're seeing this at the forefront. We need to keep talking about it. I want to know a little bit about what you really enjoyed in your research. What was you know what was very profound for you in this in this specific topic? What I think is interesting about this topic, and this is sort of something that the specific focus is something that you and I negotiated together. And I, what I love about it is that we have these global policies um, for implementation of infant feeding and emergencies practices. So these operations guidance and these sort of guidelines for different, you know, how we can protect, promote, and support breastfeeding um, when base, the basic sort of structure of society is disrupted by any, num any number of um, emergencies, natural disasters, or war, or famine, or humanitarian crises. What this, t this talk allows us to do then is to kind of think about that both in the context of global malnutrition generally, as a way of understanding well, what happens when infant feeding and emergency support doesn't go well or isn't uh, doesn't follow what is what are the recommended guidelines. Everything we know about what is needed in emergency response comes from decades of research on global nutrition generally. So the importance of breastfeeding, the importance of um, continued breastfeeding beyond the first year, the importance of appropriate complementary foods. And also thinking about breastfeeding and lactation as part of the reproductive health continuum. So one thing that one idea that has gotten a lot of traction recently, and I think it's somewhat due to um, Roger 
Thoreau's book on the first thousand days is this idea that what happens downstream has to do with what is happening with maternal child maternal trans uh, sorry, maternal nutrition in, during pregnancy. So a child who is malnourished today, we can kind of look at both her mother and her grandmother to understand the trajectory of her own nutritional status. The other thing is this talk allows me to bring in sort of my training as a medical anthropologist and really looking at things like inequalities, sort of poverty, gender inequality, uh, racism, other kinds of factors that shape the way um, maternal and infant nutrition looks across different societies and also what the humanitarian response looks like in different contexts. So even though we have these great policies and procedures that guide the implementation of humanitarian response, it looks very different, not only because the emergencies are different, but because they're occurring in different contexts, there are different pre-existing kinds of conditions that will um, influence the, the way that nutrition looks in different populations. Um, and the whole point is basically to understand that, you know, just because there is an, you know, an emergency can happen anywhere, and emergencies re reproduce um, inequalities in populations who are already facing food insecurity, but it can, it can engender um, inequalities also within developed societies um, that be, because emergen emergencies disrupt sort of social structure and access to resources too. So it's a really nice way of integrating sort of the social science in, into public health and also kind of putting this really, really strong emphasis on the importance of breastfeeding and nutrition in those first thousand days and thinking about lactation as part of the reproductive health continuum, not something that is just an acute response for nutrition, but something that actually sets up populations to be healthy for multiple generations in the future. Right, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's wonderful. It, it's, it's great to hear, um, again, it feels like a, a weaving to me of how, um, you know, you've learned through this and how much you've enjoyed utilizing your skills in this area. So it was great to hear your response there. And lastly, before we wrap up, um, what is, what's most important to you um, about sharing this topic with the delegates? What are you hoping that they'll take away from it? I think the most important thing I would like for people to understand is that um, breastfeeding is such an integral part, it's such a, a, a fundamental part of the health and nutrition and uh, flourishing of populations. So really thinking about the importance of protecting maternal and child health, particularly in that perinatal period and through infancy, those first thousand days, is not just this acute point for nutrition, but thinking about how uh, sort of nutrition across generations and thinking about those the global impact of that. Um, and the other thing I think is just to raise awareness of the importance of protecting, promoting, and supporting breastfeeding um, and human milk equity in the context of emergencies and first understanding all the different types of emergencies um, there are. There are, you know, short-term and long-term emergencies um, that, that, are, that we experience, but that um, I think most people aren't aware because em typically humanitarian response is hyper-focused on shelter and, you know, water, air, and sanitation. All those things are, are, are very important, but maternal and child nutrition is almost marginalized in the face of that, and people are, assume um, that, you know, formula is was designed to sort of um, fill the gap in emergencies, and that is the solution to emergencies, and I really want delegates to understand that breastfeeding um, is, is really the difference between life and death in these situations. Um, and it's, it's not just important in terms of acute response to emergencies, but it has profound long-term impact. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I think it, it really is erasing some of what uh, we thought to be true of the past or some of the behaviors that have happened of the past in emergencies. Um, and we really need to step it up because uh, this is, you know, this long-term impacts, like you said, it's, uh, it's not just in the interim, so thank you so much. It's great hearing your voice. It's so good uh, hearing that you're doing this work. Um, I'm excited to hear your full presentation. And for our listening audience, uh, come and join us at our Gold Lactation Conference.
Dr. Anjali Palmquist will be speaking about understanding and address addressing breastfeeding disparities and human milk inequity in emergencies. Thank you again, Anjali, for sitting down with me here today. Thank you.